Well, the next thing to do is to create our ambient occlusion and shadow passes. And to do this, I'm going to need to use my grid. In fact, I'm going to rename it Floor Proxy. I'm going to need to use it because we need something to cast shadows onto. Let's have a look at it. We can see at the moment it's a bit boring to cast shadows onto. It's completely flat with no variations. And that's going to look artificial because obviously the sand here is, is really quite bumpy. So let me increase the resolution of this grid. And then I'm going to use a mountain sob to make it bumpy. That's obviously far too high. Let's reduce that down like so. And hopefully this will be uh, sufficient to make the shadows look a little bit more realistic. Now obviously if you had some more complicated geometry here in your background image, you'd need to model those bits of geometry in order to ensure that the shadows fell properly across them. But in our case I think this will do. So let's now create uh, a new render node because we can't use this render node, not least because we need the grid to be visible in this render uh, for shadows where we don't want it visible in this primary render. So I'm going to lay down a new mantra node and I'm going to call it mantra shadows. And the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that our floor object is going to be included. So I'm going to include the floor like so. And I'm also going to exclude our global illumination light because we don't need to calculate global illumination for the shadows. And it also speeds up the render if we do that. So uh, let's now So the next step is to ensure that we have an appropriate material attached to our objects so that they can uh, produce a shadow pass. And the material that we need is called the shadow, and I've selected here already, the shadow mat material. And it's in the general tab here of the gallery and if we go down we can see shadow matte material so let's add that to our shop context and what the shadow matte material does is set the alpha channel according to whether or not uh, the area that you're rendering is in shadow or not if it's in shadow then the alpha channel will be set to one in other words opaque and if it's not in shadow then it will be set to zero in other words transparent Otherwise it has no effect, so the, the, the render will appear completely black until we look at the alpha channel. So we need to assign this material to everything in our scene. And you might think that we could just do that here uh, in our object network by selecting all of the object at once and then assigning it here in the material parameter. But in fact that won't work. And the reason it won't work is because where we've assigned materials at on a per primitive basis, which we've done here for the wheel, if you remember, we used a material sob and two primitive groups to assign materials there. That will override anything we do here at the scene level. And that's because unlike in some renderers, the rule for mantra is that lower level parameters override higher level ones and in mantras terms a, a primitive assignment where you're assigning a material per primitive that will override any assignment of material here at the scene level in other words per individual object so we can't just change these because in the case of the wheel it won't have any effect because the materials here that are being assigned by the material sort won't be changed. So we need a more sophisticated approach. Unfortunately there's a way that we can relatively easily change all of these materials at once. 
before we do that, I need to create a take. And if you'll recall, a take is a way of changing parameters within our scene without uh, necessarily permanently changing them. We, we accumulate the changes in a take, and then we can use that take uh, for a particular render while preserving the original values for a different render. So let's uh, append a new take. And I'm going to edit the name. I'm going to call it Shadow. And with this selected, with this take selected, any changes that I make are going to apply just to this take. They're not going to affect what happens here at the main take. The next thing I need to do is find a method of changing those shadow parameters, uh, sorry, those material parameters for all of the objects in our scene at once. And to do that, the parameter spreadsheet is what I need. And the parameter spreadsheet is a way of looking at all of our nodes and all of their parameters at once. In order to filter the nodes and parameters that we're looking at, we can use these two boxes here, and they are just text boxes which take wild cards. So if I type star in here, for instance, that will match the name of every single node in our scene. And there we are. We've got a list of every single node in our scene. And we need to know what parameters we're going to want to change. So let's have a look here. And if I hover my mouse over here, we can see that that parameter is actually called shop material path. And if I go down here into my material, material node, that is called shop material path as well. So what I want to do is type star material star, like so. And we can see mostly we're getting these grey boxes. That's because a lot of these nodes have no parameter which matches this filter here. If we go down, we can see that in some cases we will find nodes which have, and here we have one. So the object model node, the object top node, frame node, the wheels node, and so on. So these are these are the geometry nodes that we have in our scene. Uh, sorry, uh, so those we'll need to change the parameters for. And then here we've got our material one node. That's this node here. And we can see that here we've got, in fact, two shop material parameters. They correspond to the two tabs that we've got here. So we can select. Uh, this column, this column, and we don't want that column. I'm control clicking here to select individual columns. So we've selected, uh, and we don't want that column either, which appears to have a drop down menu. So we just want the shop material, shop material path, and then we want this one, the shop material one, and shop material two. And obviously, if we had other tabs here, we'd have to extend this to cover those. But for the moment, that's fine. If I right click on one of these uh, nodes, which does actually have a parameter, we see that we get the normal menu, and we can select, include selected in take. And that will mean that we can now edit the values here. And unfortunately I can't use a selector here, so I'm going to need to check what the name of my shader is. It's Shadow Mat. So I want Shop Shadow Mat. And when I press Enter, that's going to change all of these parameters to the same thing. And let's have a look at that here at the object level. Uh, the scene level, rather. If we have a look at our top, that now has shadow mat. Frame has shadow mat. Wheels have shadow mat. If I go inside, this also has shadow mat. And so does this. So that's going to ensure that everything, in this take, everything has a shadow mat shader assigned. Now, in fact, I'm going to add a little bit more variation here now that I've done that. Uh, and let's go back to our main take. 
So I'm going to separate out the shadows for the the ground, the shadows falling on the ground, and the shadows that are falling on the chair itself. And I can do that quite easily. So let me rename this Mantra Shadows Floor. And in this case, what I want to do is make sure that we're using the shadow take. Uh, but there's one more change I want to make, which is to ensure that our chair is not going to render. We're just going to see the floor and the shadows that are on that. And I can do that here by adding to our take a further refinement. So let's go back to our take. Uh, which is to select the components of the chair here. And on the Render tab, we can see that there's this option Phantom. And Phantom means that these uh, objects will cast shadows, but not show up in our primary render. So let's include this in Take and enable it. That should mean we won't see the chair, but we will see the, ch the shadows that it casts. So let's see whether that works. I'm going to render using the Mantra Shadows Floor node and see what we get. And that's finished rendering. If I have a look at the alpha channel, I can see that what I'm getting are the shadows in the alpha channel of our chair. So let's get rid of that. Now we need to repeat this. I can get rid of my parameter spreadsheet now. We need to repeat this for... Let's go back to the main tag. We need to repeat this so that we just get the shadows on the chair. So let's duplicate this, and I'm going to rename it lounger and now we've got a problem because we've got a take which includes all of that assignment to materials and we don't want to redo that however we have got to change the phantom assignment so what we can do here is right click this and select copy take and then we can select, making sure we've got main selected, paste take. And that will duplicate the take that we've just created. Now you've got to be careful here because if you uh, have this selected and do paste take, you add a subsidiary take and that inherits all of the changes you've made here. So you don't really want to do that. You want to make sure that the takes are both parented to the main take. So let's rename this one. Uh, which we're going to call it Shadow Lounger, like so. Let's go back uh, to our objects. And in this case, let's select these three... Th let's select these three things. And let's undo the Phantom. And then go back to the main and to the output network and make sure that we're rendering with Shadow Lounger. And we also can exclude the floor in this case because I think there won't be any shadows that are being cast by the floor onto the lounger. So let's just leave that and let's just try rendering again using this new mantra node. And I'm going to pause the video while this and we can see that we've now just got uh, the elements of shadow that are falling on the frame of uh, and the body of the lounger itself. That's the shadow passes. The next thing I need to do is create an ambient occlusion pass, and I need yet another mantra node to do that. And let's call this mantra AO. And I want to, again, change the 
material that the nodes are going to use. So I need to lay down another material. And the material I need is occlusion here. Uh, I don't need displacements, it's just occlusion that I need. So let's drag one on. And let's have a look at its parameters. And it gives you uh, rather more control than the method of generating an occlusion pass using the GI light. And in particular, it has this option, Mask for Compositing. And what Mask for Compositing allows us to do is to create, as we'll see in a second, a variation of the way the ambient occlusion is calculated that's very useful uh, when you're going to use it in a compositing context. So we now need to assign this shader to everything. So let's go to our parameter spreadsheet. In fact, first let's demonstrate a slightly easier method of achieving uh, the reallocation of shaders. So I'm going to go to one of our shaders uh, and I need to have my uh, I need to create a new take of course. Let's do that first. So let's append take, uh, edit it and I'm going to call it AO. So with this take selected uh, let's uh, select the material here, include it in the take and choose our occlusion material. And now go into the parameter spreadsheet and look for everything. And in this case, we want, again, everything with a material node. And we're going to control click that column, that column, and that column as before, because these are the things that include material node and we need to include intake like so and then we've already selected the shader in this particular geometry node so if we just press enter uh, that will ensure that that is then replicated on all of these parameters so let's go back to our match output node and let's again select AO. And let's render it and see what we get. And you see what we're getting is a slightly odd effect because, in fact, uh, the areas that are occluded by the ambient occlusion are white and the areas that are not occluded are dark. And that's actually quite useful if we want to use this in a compositing context because we can just multiply something by the occlusion uh, or the inverse of the occlusion, rather, and it will produce uh, what we need. Now, I've made an obvious mistake here because I need to include the ground in this render. So I will do so. On the Objects tab, we need to force the inclusion of the floor proxy. I won't demonstrate the render of that again, but that's how to create our ambient occlusion pass. And uh, let's move on now to look at one final type of pass. The final thing I want to do is illustrate a way of creating masks for the separate elements in your object. And you can also use this to mask, create masks for different objects in your scene. Uh, and in this instance, uh, what I'm going to do is create some shaders, first of all. And I'm going to use the standard constant shader. And and select its parameters and go into the shop context. I'm going to rename this red and I'm going to give it a color of 1, 0, 0, like so. I'm going to control C, control V that to copy it. I'm going to rename it blue and I'm going to give it a value of 0, 1, 0. 
sorry, that's uh, of course wrong, naught, naught, one, and then control C, control V, and call it green, and one, and zero, like so. So we've now got three uh, pure color shaders, and in my object view, I need to first of all create a, a new take. Let's go into my take list, rename this uh, masks, and with that selected, I'm going to go into my first material. I'm going to include that in the take, and I'm going to give it uh, a value of red. Then my second, I'm going to include this in the take and give it a value of blue. And finally, I'm going to include this in the take and I'm going to give it a value of green. Now we face the same problem here as we did before, which is that this material here is going to be overridden by the material sop further down. So I'm going to disable this and if you just click this like this, then that doesn't get included in the take. Uh, but if you use the right click menu to toggle bypass, you can see that it gets included here into the take and then I can toggle it off. So that's going to disable the material assignment at the primitive level. And what we should find now, if we go back to our output and turn on the main uh, take, and I need to set up another mantra node, so let's do that. And I'm going to call this mantra masks. And I'm going to render it, obviously, with the masks take. And what we should find with this and I can disable all lights for this just to save time because we're using a constant shader like this exclude all lights and disable headlight creation that'll just speed up the render a little bit and if we render we can see that this renders out and we get the different parts of our object colored with different primary colors. And the important thing about this is that because these channels are entirely separate, uh, we get proper and aliased masks for three elements of our object. And of course, this technique only works uh, if you have three or less components of your object. Uh, you would need to create separate uh, iterations of this if you have different objects and make sure that you only include those objects which you, you want to look at. But for the moment it'll work uh, just for this instance. So that's created our passes. Uh, so in the next part we're going to move on to compositing. So what can we do with uh, these image planes that we've now imported into the compositor? Well, one of the standard things to do in compositing is to adjust your lighting. So, for example, to tone down the diffuse lighting or to reduce one of these specular highlights. And in order to do that, you need to be able to recreate this, your beauty path, from the individual components. And how do you do that? Well, if we have a look at the shader, the basic surface shader, and we go inside, it's not terribly clear, but what is happening to create the final color here is that we're taking the paint, that's just the plain color of the object, not affected by any lighting. We're multiplying it by the diffuse lighting, which is also called Lambert lighting. We're then adding in the specular. So the color times the diffuse plus the specular gives us our final color that we're using in the output. So what we should be able to do, one would have thought, in our compositing network 
is to take our paint, multiply it by the diffuse lighting, and then add the specular component. And if we do this, what we should get is the same as this. Let's have a quick look and see what it looks like. And we can see that we do get we do get uh, something that looks quite like the original image. But uh, there may be some problems here. It looks, looks a bit rough, this edge here, compared to the original. So fortunately, there's a node in the compositor which will allow us to compare the original beauty pass with this pass that we've reconstructed from the different components. And that's the diff node. So let's feed in uh, our the result of our combination to one end of this and the original image into the other end. And then if we select the display switch, we can see, well, it looks pretty similar, but if we zoom in here, we can see that there's an artifact here on the edge of this sphere. And you may think, well, it's not a terribly important artifact. It's quite narrow. You might not notice it. Well, in order to show you that we can't really ignore it, I'm going to go to our mantra node and I'm going to turn on motion blur, which I can do here. And I'm going to render out the sequences again, so I'm going to pause the video while we do that. So that's been rendered out, so let's go back to our image network. And I need to reload everything, like so. And what we can see now is that the differences are really quite pronounced here. And it's not quite clear what's going on here, but it is something to do with the way Mantra samples different image planes when you're outputting them like this. There is a workaround, fortunately, which I can show you.